Hi YouTube and welcome. Today I'm going to do the biggest project I ever made on my YouTube channel. I'm going to set up this video card, a 1050 Ti, on a computer mining solar 24-7 using a battery. We're going to check how much can you make and if I'm ever going to make my money back and see if it's really worth it to mine on solar panel. Now stay tuned for the end of the video because at the end I'm going to show you how to get this card. I'm going to send it to one of my subscribers for free. So stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to give this card, the 1050 Ti, 4GB, as thank you for all the subscribers and gamers at the same time. First, we're going to have to build the computer, then set up all the cabling to the solar panel, the converter, and the battery. Then we're going to have to install the solar on the roof and set everything up and start it and see how it mines and see how long it can mine only on solar panel. I choose a big solar panel so the extra solar that's going to be made by the sun will go to the battery. So now let's check out all the parts that I have and see how we're gonna start. For this project, we're gonna need a lot of parts. Battery, a 100 watt battery, so it can run at night and charge during the day. A PC case to store all the mining equipment. We need a CPU with the A4-7300 AMD, and it's really low price, and I'll show you guys the link below. This eight gigabyte DDR3 RAM, a basic motherboard, 400 watt power supply. We have also a charger controller for the battery and a solar controller as well. We have a 300 watt converter, we have a 1050 Ti GPU, and we have this solar panel. And this solar panel is huge, look at it. You need all that for 200 watt solar panel, so it can run it during the day and charge it as well, so it can run at night, 24 seven. Now let's start with a PC assembly. We're gonna start with the motherboard. We're gonna install the CPU. See how I follow this line. Then I'm gonna go ahead and install the heatsink with the fan and plug in the CPU fan. Now don't forget to put um, some paste on here. Boom, that was easy. Now we're gonna go ahead with the crucial eight gig RAM. Two gig might work too, but I wanna make sure I can mine any type of currency. So I'm gonna do the eight gigabyte, but you can also go with two gigabyte of RAM. This is a DDR3. We're also going to need those two USB devices. This is a Wi-Fi USB adapter and this is a 128 gigabyte Samsung USB drive. Now the reason I use those two is because SSD takes more power and I don't need that much computing power to run a miner, especially if I'm running an iSash. Therefore, this is a, a better alternative. It's also much cheaper. I use Winter USB software to install Windows on this. So there's already Windows here and that's all you need to run the computer without an SSD. I researched and I find out this is the best way. You're also gonna use less watts and that's what I'm looking for. So to reduce the amount of power I need, I'm gonna use one slot of RAM and a very, very simple CPU, which I'm gonna underclock. We're gonna install those once the computer is assembled. First, make sure to install the motherboard plate. Now it's time for the 1050 Ti unboxing. It's really small and it's not gonna take a lot of power, so that's good. We're gonna install it on the motherboard. Now let's secure it in place. Now we're gonna install the power supply. Now let's hook up the power to the motherboard. Now let's hook up the power to the CPU. I found the diagram how to connect the motherboard to the PC case so I can turn on and off and switch and all that stuff. So I'm gonna follow this and hook up the cables accordingly. It's all done, now let's close it. And screw it in. Now for the back, we're gonna install the Wi-Fi USB and our hard drive, but just a USB with Windows in it. So we don't have to run any cables or have an SSD in it. 
It's gonna run the whole windows from this little guy. Well, it turns on. We have to change now that it's gonna boot from USB. Well, it's starting windows from the USB right away. So I know it takes a while because it's a USB, it's not an SSD or a hard drive. It's a little slower, so this will take a minute. And we have Ethernet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the driver booster to get all the drivers going and nice hash. Now let's do the wiring. So this is the inverter. This one will basically connect to the battery and convert it to 110 volts. So I can plug in the computer right here. This one is up to 300 watts. That means I can run probably two video cards, like two 1070s or something like that. I need an adapter for this. I didn't want to solder and do all that stuff. So instead, I bought this. It's a heavy duty um, and it has those alligator clips that go to the battery. And it connects like this. So that part is done. This goes to the battery and now I have power to the computer. Now the problem is that this is the only cable length I have um, for the solar and this is way too short. So I'm gonna have to extend it. So I'm gonna make this shorter and the solar charger cable longer. So then the solar will be outside and the charger control and the battery will be right next to it. Let's do it right now using a soldering iron. As you can see, this is the connector for the solar panel. This is the connector for the battery. They have different uh, polarity. It's different. So I'm going to cut this out and solder this instead because I don't want it to be wrong. We are now going to solder the negative for the solar panel. Once it's soldered, I can put the sleeve on and shrink it with the heat of the iron. So the first thing I did with this computer is basically installed Chrome Remote Desktop. When I install that, it gives me the option to remotely access this computer because I'm never really going to be next to this computer. I'm going to have it remotely accessed and monitor it online, especially because it's not going to be in my house. So I'm going to be able to control this computer online. Because I'm using this computer in a different place, I had to manually enter the Wi-Fi username and password into the Wi-Fi settings so then when I actually go to that new place, it will automatically connect. Hopefully that works correctly, and then I don't have to bring a screen and all that to connect, just to connect to the Wi-Fi. But once it's connected to the Wi-Fi, I'll be able to remotely control it. The next step is to basically download the nice hash, which is right here. You click on sell because you're basically lending your equipment. Once you're here, you click on CPU or GPU because that's what we're gonna install. And here you can just download the nice hash too, which I did and I installed it. So I also installed the MSI Afterburner. It's a way for me to control the overclocking or underclocking of the 1050 Ti video card. Now, if I overclock it, obviously I can make more. If I underclock it, obviously I'm gonna make less. And the reason I'm underclocking it is because I'm gonna run this on solar. So I have to think about the least amount of power I can take while still making some money. So I underclocked every single thing, even the fan speed, because I noticed that those things run really, really cold. The CPU and the GPU, when you underclock them, run absolutely cold so i'm running everything at the lowest possible way i can go ahead and try to do this and see how much battery left and if i can see that i have more battery if the sun creates more electricity and charge my battery more i can go ahead and play with those core voltages and power limits and the core clock speeds and all that and see if i can increase it a little bit at a time and still not draw, much, draw too much power that um, i can run it full time on solar so my experiment starts with lowest setting possible at the lowest possible power and consuming only 82 to 84 watts total we are only drawing 82 84 watts when i'm running the video card and the operation system all running at the same time. That's a very, very low number. I mean, I'm usually getting 200, 300 watts with only one video card in there. 
So that's a really, really low number, and that's probably the lowest I can go. And my solar panel creates 200 watts, but not the whole day, only when it's sunny. And uh, luckily we're in LA, so there's plenty of sun throughout the day. Uh, if you place your solar panel in the correct place, you should be able to get plenty of power to charge the battery during the day and power up the mining rig and at night running only from the battery. I learned something pretty cool doing this. I learned that when you have a video card that you're gonna underclock or overclock, what I do is first I underclock it and then I can go to the hardware details and I can benchmark the the video card again different algorithm mine different ways when you underclock or overclock your system so when i underclock my system it liked particular coin and it draw less power from that particular coin but when i overclock the system or basically have it a stock clock it like a different coin to mine it was mining better at that coin i learned that you should benchmark every time you touch the settings of the overclock or underclock because the video card will mine better or more efficiently in different clock speeds so that's pretty cool that i learned that and it's a great plus i didn't even realize it so i hope you guys try too and see if it works for you but that's awesome that i learned this just from trying this solar panel experiment another cool fact as you can see i'm only using nine to ten percent of the power of the gpu but now remember this is a 1050 ti this is not a 1080 or 1070 or some 570 rx or something like that so, you know, it's a very, very efficient card at a specific coin at that specific speed. Basically, you can find a way to mine a specific coin very, very efficiently with your video card without drawing a lot of power. Actually drawing 10, 20, 30% of the power of the video card, which it originally is designed, but still mine 80 to 90% of the profit. So that can give you a lot more profit when you play around with video cards. So if you're really technical and you go into those things and you do research and you try things and uh, calculate, you can actually get the most amount of your card. And I'm very surprised those cards can do this. I'm very surprised that this card can actually mine. You know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but for a 1050 Ti, which is, you know, a very basic card, you know, when it comes to mining, it's not, not really, people don't really use it for mining much. But I notice it's uh, very efficient and it doesn't draw a lot of power. So that's why I wanted this specific card for my solar panel experiment now if we have a huge uh, solar uh, farm like a, like a big a lot of solar panels like a thousand watt we can definitely run like a few 1060s or 1070s uh, something crazy like that but we don't have that yet I started with this micro solar 100% off the grid system so I made an Amazon list for everything that's uh, that you need to in order to buy this uh, setup the solar mining 24 <laughs> 7 setup and you actually need quite a lot of things. So let's start with the case. You know, case doesn't really matter. Whatever case you can find, that is whatever cheapest case you can find. Um, if you have a wood frame that you want to, you know, put it on a wood frame, that can work too. Uh, power supply, again, if you get a more efficient power supply, you may be able to run longer. So, you know, more efficient power supply is recommended. And then you'll be able to run longer at night. And then we have a, a CPU, it's, this one is the AMD A4, it's just a basic uh, CPU. Uh, if you want to go with the 7th uh, generation stuff, you can do that too, but it's about the same because we're not really mining on it, it's just there to work. And then uh, motherboard again, uh, if you're planning to have 6 video cards or more for mining solar, then you, wanna, you might want to spend more money and get one that supports multiple PCI Express slots. Now the converter, I found a really nice 300 watt converter. This one can do probably uh, two t 1050 Ti's or uh, one 1080, no problem. Uh, if you're planning to do more video cards, get a higher watt. But this is basically pretty much what I used for this uh, specific video. And when it comes to the hard drive, so here I got a different approach. I actually got a... Uh, SanDisk flash drive in case uh, instead of SSD. I did notice it's very very slow so it takes uh, a little longer to set this up but it does give you much less parts, less cables, less problems. You just stick a USB in there and the computer works, right? You simply download the Win to USB software. It's really, really easy to use. It actually works great. Or original Windows CD, you can just burn it right into your USB. So that's what this USB for. If you can afford um, a better USB that's faster, something that has like 200 or 100 megabyte per second read and write, you'll have a much higher performance while you're setting it up. But to be honest with you, once it's set up, 
it's meaningless. You know, nice hash doesn't require anything. It just requires computer that is on. You know, it's up to you, but that works for me. Two gigabyte DDR3, that works just fine. You can go higher, but why? You know, no need. Uh, you're mining on the video card. You need a solar charger controller. I have the exact same one. It's basically uh, making sure that your battery getting charged and uh, during the sun and it converts the voltage the correct way that goes to your battery. It charges it more efficiently. Uh, video card, the 1050 Ti, but if you have a video card that can run like 100 watts or you know less and you can run it efficiently, buy that. But uh, I just like uh, EVGA, easy to set up, very efficient, very quiet, not very hot. AMDs tend to have a little higher performance and a little more tweaking but uh, it's definitely worth checking out AMD video cards as well battery you need a big battery I got a hundred watt hour battery it's heavy it's uh, almost 70 pounds you need that because during the day you're gonna create excess power more power than your computer is gonna consume because we're running a, a very small consuming uh, mining rig so that extra power have to go to the battery so you can mine 24 7 but the battery comes in at night so the battery will run at night and make sure your computer keep running, keep mining. So you need the battery. Uh, make sure you get a big one. For every video card, you probably need at least 100 amp hour or two of those even. Uh, so I'm a little bit risking it. This is pretty much the, the smallest battery I can get. But if you're running a big rig, you need more batteries. And when it comes to solar, 200 watt is enough for me because I'm running only 70 to 80 watts computer. So uh, this is way enough. The excess power will go into charge the battery and we have plenty of sun in Los Angeles. If you live in a place where it's very cloudy or you don't get as much sun, I'll definitely say buy more solar panels because those those watt uh, ranges is only like perfect condition, perfect sun, you know, so that doesn't really happen all the time. So you definitely need more solar panel if you are living in a place that is, you know, has a lot of shade, sun is not very strong long winters stuff like that obviously in winter this thing we're gonna have to take a break so this is something to consider as well yeah so that's it for the price list and this is all the parts i used and all the parts you need to create your own experiment with solar mining so i finished building the computer and i used the win to usb device and it's all running perfectly it's a bit slower than ssd but i know it takes less power and that's what i'm looking for i also on the clock the RAM to 800 Hertz megahertz because I want to draw less power in general and also I want to draw less power on idle so I'm trying to look for a solution to draw as least as I can so then pretty much the only power that's getting drawn mainly is from the video card and then that's actually what makes the profit right from the mining so I show you guys all the parts that is involved I show you all the computer setup all the software that I had to install, all the things I had to order, and whew, this is the biggest project I ever made for sure. There's a lot of parts involved. I had to use all my knowledge through whatever I learned all my life to learn how to solder from calculating amp and wattage calculations from battery. I had to do all that in order to make this work. And now this is part one. In part two, which is the next video, I will show you how I actually install it on the roof. I'm gonna run it from running from battery and solar and see if it can run how long? A week, maybe a few days, only on power of the sun and at night power of the battery. So we're gonna test that very soon. In the second video, I will also announce the winner for that 1050 Ti that I will give out for you of my viewers um, as a thank you for watching my videos and keep subscribing and supporting that helps me continue making those cool experiments and videos so thank you guys so much all you have to do is comment whatever you want below I don't care comment uh, will it run on crisis uh, you know on solar I don't know whatever you want comment below and one of you will win and I don't care where you are in the world I'll ship it to any country because I live in America and I can so great Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video number two where I'm going to install it and test it and see what happens. Bye-bye.